guys, it's Tara and welcome to my home. I thought we would make a beautiful sweet treat and that is called Iranian baklava. It is a beautiful dessert that's filled with aromatic ingredients like rose water and cardamom and tons of nuts and plump raisins. It is just so good. I mean, my mouth is literally drooling right now because I want it so bad. <laughs> so on that note, let's get right into it and let me show you how to make this beautiful dessert called baklava. All right guys, so we are going to start putting all of our ingredients together. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to bring out is your food processor. If you don't have a fruit food processor, you can use a knife. It'll just take a lot longer to do, but it's doable, so don't trip if you don't, <laughs> if you don't have one. <laughs> All right, so I have a cup and a half, close to a cup and a half of uh, pistachios that are shelled already. We're going to add that to our processor. And then we have a cup and a half of blanched slivered almonds. We're going to add that into our processor. And then we're going to put the top on and just whip it up. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look here. You know what, let's do a little bit finer, a little bit more because you want this mix to be super fine as far as the nuts go. see this consistency here which is so beautiful all right guys so now that your your pistachios and your almonds are chopped up you're going to want to add about a cup and a half of raisins and you're going to add that straight into your food processor like so but when you start mixing it you want to make sure that you don't over mix it because then you're just going to get this round sticky dough that you do not want so give it a light pulse just to get everything incorporated together. So that's all you want to do. I'm going to close this up and it's going to hit it up, like give it a few pulses. All over to your mixing bowl. Looks so beautiful, guys. I mean, I love this nut mix. Yum, yum, yum. Perfect. Okay, guys, so now that we have our in our nuts and our raisin all mixed up together, we're just going to take about a teaspoon and a half of ground cardamom and we're just going to sprinkle this all in to our mix like so. And we're just going to give everything a good toss to get that cardamom really well incorporated into our ingredients. Oh smells so good. I love the smell of cardamom. It's one of my favorite, favorite smells. Yeah. All right guys, so let's get to the fun part and let me show you how we're going to start putting everything together. All right guys, so now it's the fun part, but it's a little time consuming. So I'm gonna like pre-warn you now. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is bringing out our phyllo dough. Now make sure when you go to the store, you're getting phyllo dough and now and not pastry puff, okay? There's a difference. Some people go, oh, there's no phyllo dough, so I'm gonna get the pastry puff. Don't get the pastry puff because you're gonna mess up the entire thing, okay? <laughs> so make sure it says phyllo dough, not pastry puff, all right? So on that note, 
I have brought out my phyllo uh, dough. I used one package, which is usually about one pound, and you're going to bring bring it up to room temperature. So I always like to bring it out of the freezer or the fridge for at least three hours prior to the baking process, okay? So you're going to carefully roll out your phyllo dough like so. And I'm gonna move this over like this. I also have a wet kitchen cloth that I'm going to constantly keep on my phyllo dough in between my uh, layering because if you don't have this on there, you're going to dry out your phyllo dough and it's going to be really hard to work with. So you wanna make sure that you constantly keep a wet towel or paper towel on top of your phyllo roll at all times as you're layering things. Got it? All right, so next step here. So I have two sticks of melted butter in my bowl and you're just, just going to get your uh, pastry brush and you're going to start brushing the bottom of your baking dish. Now I am using a nine by 13 baking dish but you can use whatever size you like. Just make sure that you cut your pastry, uh, your phyllo dough, according to the size of your dish. So we're going to do it like that. And then we're going to start putting our phyllo dough together. I have one layer and it's super thin. And don't worry if it starts cracking or ripping or any of that, it's totally fine, okay? Don't tread, it's okay. <laughs> and then, so one layer, and then we're going to put butter in between each layer. Now this is a good time to maybe bring out a glass of wine or listen to some good music but just have fun with it because it's actually a really relaxing, really relaxing process. So I had the first layer on there, I put butter down, now I'm putting the second layer of phyllo dough on top and I'm gonna put more butter, okay? You guys, if it's not obvious, this is not a healthy dessert, okay? <laughs> it's filled with sugar, and butter, but it's okay, YOLO, all right, YOLO. <laughs> Enjoy your life, once in a while it's okay. Once in a while it's okay to indulge and have fun. Just don't do it often, you know? Balance, balance is key. So I put another layer on there, on that second layer. Again, put butter in between each layer. And now I have my third sheet of phyllo on there. And again, I'm putting more butter. So I now have three sheets of phyllo dough in my baking dish, okay? So now that I have three sheets on there of phyllo dough, I'm gonna take anywhere between half a cup to a cup, half a cup is good, half a cup to a cup of my nut mix, my nut in, and raisin mix, I'm gonna sprinkle that on top of my phyllo dough, okay? And then, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna do that process all over again. Yes, all over again. Just like 50 more times, okay? <laughs> so, three, one more down, add the butter, because everything tastes better with butter. And we're just going to dab it on there. Okay, so I have my layer of phyllo dough on there, and then butter, and then phyllo dough, and then butter, and then phyllo dough, okay? <laughs> All right, so we're at our second layer right now. So the equation here is three sheets of phyllo dough then your nut mix, then three sheets of phyllo dough, 
and then your nut mix. And we're just gonna keep repeating this process until you're at the top, okay? Super easy. I'm not gonna complicate this. <laughs> and also guys, you might be wondering what the difference is between Persian baklava and like your traditional Greek or Lebanese baklava. Persians make it a little different, okay? We don't use honey. We use rose water and sugar instead. And we don't use walnuts. We use pistachios and almonds instead. So it's the same, but it's different, okay? <laughs> yeah. I, I personally like the Persian version uh, more than the Greek version, but that's because I'm obsessed with the flavors of cardamom, and I'm obsessed with the flavor of rose water, and rose and pistachios. Like I just love that flavor palette a lot more. All right. Shoot, did I lose track of how many I just did? It's fine. <laughs> I think I lost track. <laughs> I wanna. We're just gonna assume that there's three on here, and it's time for the nut mix. Okay. <laughs> How did they do that? <laughs> That's what happens when you talk. There's, you should probably keep like quiet and concentrate when you're doing this. And again, repeat the process and put half a cup to a cup of your nut mix again. Voila. All right, guys. So I'm not gonna bore you with all these steps. So I'm just gonna like snap my fingers and everything's gonna come up right now, okay? So one, two, <laughs> it's all cleaned up and all done magically. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> all right, guys, so I have put down the last layer of my nut and raisin mixture, and then I put three more layers of the phyllo sheets, and then we're just gonna top it off with a little bit more melted butter, like so. And that is it. It's ready to be baked to its deliciousness as I like to say, yummy. Okay, so now that we have it looking like this, totally gorgeous, I'm gonna take the knife and we're going to make those beautiful diamond shaped cuts that you usually see in baklava. And it's super simple. You're going to start in the farthest corner of your baking dish and you're just gonna run your knife all the way through. And then just make these slanted cuts. And don't worry about not going all the way through on each cut. You just want to get the shape going, you know? You can always uh, cut it deeper once it's all baked. But try to get down as far as possible, you know? And be gentle because you don't want to you don't want to rip it. <laughs> you don't want to rip it and you don't want to ruin the hard work that you just put into lay, layering everything, okay? So you can see what I'm doing here. It's almost done. Now I've gone completely one side and now we're going to do it to the other side so that we have diamonds. Because diamonds are a girl's best friend. Boop, boop. <laughs> All right, uh, this is where it gets a little tricky because you wanna make sure that nothing starts lifting. It's a little hard, but you can do it guys. I have faith in you. But you can do this before or after the baking. So it's all done. We have our layers, we have our diamond cut shape, and it's good to go. I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. Just gonna take this, we're gonna stick it in for 20 to 30 minutes, just until it's nice and golden brown on top. That's what you're gonna look for. All right guys, see you soon.
All right, guys, so our baklava is baking, and while that's baking, we want to make the rose water syrup for the baklava. So I have a small saucepan here. I'm just going to turn that on, like so. I have a cup of water that I'm just going to pour into our saucepan. And I'm going to pour in about a cup and a half of rose water. Now, rose water you're going to typically find in the Middle Eastern uh, super supermarkets, or if you don't have a Middle Eastern supermarket next to you, you can order it on my Amazon shop, which I'll put the link below. And if not, if you don't want to get it from Amazon, you can go directly to like sadaf.com and just order it from them, because Sadaf, I think, makes some of the best rose water out there. Although this one's not it. But it's okay, it's all they have right now. All they had right now, so that's fine. I have my rose water and my water mixed in there, and I'm just going to pour in my sugar. There's a lot of sugar. It's a cup and a half of granulated sugar, and you're just going to pour that right in there. All right, we're going to mix that all up. Where's my little spoon? We're going to mix this like so, and we're going to let that come up to a boil. And once it comes up to a boil, you're going to turn down the heat all the way to low, and you're just going to let it simmer just gently, just so it gets that little bit of a thickness. And once the baklava is done, we're just going to pour the syrup right on top of the baklava. So it's going to be all ready by the time the baklava is ready. Oh, you guys, this looks so beautiful. Oh, I get too excited about food. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, guys, as you can see, it is so beautiful and golden up top. You can see all the beautiful layers of the nuts peeping through. It's just, it's just perfect. I love you so much. I'm so happy that you turned out the way you did. <laughs> okay, so I have my syrup here that I made, which is the rose water again with the water and the sugar. And we let that simmer on a low simmer for the duration that this was cooking that was about 20 minutes. So all we're going to do now is we're gonna take our saucepan and we're going to just pour everything gently onto our baklava. Just trying not to spill it. You guys, that sizzle though, that sizzle is amazing. All right, we're just gonna drench everything. All right, you see how it's all simmering like that? I'm pull this down. Okay, it's gorgeous. All right, so now we're going to take, um, I have a handful of uh, uh, pistachios that I chopped up, and I'm just gonna take that and I'm going to sprinkle it on top of my baklava. Okay, so we have, we put the pistachios on top, and now I have a handful of dried rose petals. This is an optional ingredient, but I love to add it because it gives it like a pop of color, and also it's just, you know, it's just beautiful to look at. So aesthetically, I think it's really, really pretty. But if you don't want it, and if you don't have it, don't even worry about it, because it still looks beautiful without. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this on top as well. Again, to just bring in beautiful color. So now we have our pistachio and our rose on top, and it's all done. But this is the big part. Don't be tempted to stick your fingers or your fork or something in this right now because it's too early. You have to let this sit for a minimum of three hours at room temperature. So you gotta let it cool down for three hours before you can even attempt to eat this. It's better if you leave it out 
um, overnight on the counter or anything. Just, yeah, for the full night, it'd be the best. It'd be the most ideal, and then you can enjoy it tomorrow. So it's one of those desserts that you can't enjoy right away. Mm, sad, but it's worth the wait, I promise. <laughs> all right, so that's it, guys. It's beautiful, and it's all done. All right, guys, well, that is it. Thank you so much for having me here on the Fahrenheit Foundation Fahrenheit Flavor, which has been such an amazing opportunity and such an honor to be on. So I really, really, really appreciate it. And I really hope that you enjoyed this recipe and I hope that you try it because it's it seems complicated, but it's actually relaxing and easy to make. <laughs> so if you wanna keep following me and seeing more of my recipes, you can find me on Instagram at Tara underscore Radcliffe, or you can find me on YouTube at at home with Tara or Chef Tara Radcliffe. So make sure to check me out and hopefully I will see you soon. Thanks so much guys, bye.